Hey everyone, it's Jolt here. So I'm spending my holiday in the Alps, my favorite location. And as I have some free time on my hand, I'm also finishing up my book on a page summary for Rick Rubin's The Creative Act. This is the book that we were working on in cohort nine of the visual thinking workshop, but I wasn't quite satisfied with the book on a page summary that I created. So I wanted to work on it a little bit further. Now, there are two things I utterly dislike about Rick's book, and let me just start with a bit of a rant. First of all, the book is disorganized. It lacks almost any structure. It's more like 78 meditations on the topic of creativity, some of them conflicting with each other. It's definitely not placed there in any logical order or at least I wasn't able to decipher it and overall for this reason it is pretty hard to read. The other thing that I dislike about it but that's just me personally is the reference to the universe talking to us. This is something I get completely turned off of. In my mind humanity over the ages always used the word the universe or the stars or the gods are talking to us when we had no idea what's happening so my takeaway is likely Rick doesn't quite have an idea of what he's talking about but for sure he has worked with many artists so I think his meditations are of interest so the approach we took in cohort 9 was to create an illustration for each chapter of the book. Now, this was pretty strenuous, and I don't recommend a similar approach in the future, because some of the chapters are really small. This meant lots of illustrations, but on the other hand, it was a nice way to meditate on each chapter, and it was also a nice challenge to create these illustrations. Because the book is sort of a meditation book, I thought that the background of a Tibetan uh, prayer flags would be nice for the collection of my literature notes. So in the end, my literature notes ended up to be individual cards on this flag or on this picture of Tibetan flags. Now, after I've read the book, the created a concept map of the creative act trying to define what Rick means by being creative or by the term the creative act and that was the basis of my book on a page summary in the end I divided the book into these parts so first of all there's this overall statement from Rick that everyone is a creator and it's not about a particular form of art. You can be a creator even at home as you cook your dinner. That can also be creative. And then Rick goes on to talk about the source. The source being all the inspirations, all the ideas, all the possibilities out there that we need to tune into and notice. And this noticing is what he refers to as our filter and our personality but also the things we listen to the input we take how we curate what we listen to what we watch what we read what we think these are all going to influence what we pick out from the infinite amount of information around us and what Rick urges us to do is not to look for the one big idea, but rather, as we filter out inspirations, create or plant these seeds and plant many of these seeds. Because you never know, it, a seed might look very promising, but in the end, nothing might come of it. And another seed might look sort of pale, and in the end, it grows into a beautiful flower or tree. Rick continues on that once you have your seeds planted, then you should be gardening them. And gardening means 
experimenting, trying different things out, trying the opposite of what others are doing or what you've been doing previously. It is about playing like a child with your ideas and expecting surprise to happen. And once you play with your ideas, with the seeds, some of them will start to develop. And when you see a promising seedling, that is the time to move on from the experimentation gardening role to more of the crafting role. And crafting can be tedious. During crafting, you're going to be spending lots of hours with your work, and it even might take years to craft something. Crafting involves skills and it involves lots of work. But what you need to pay attention to, according to Rick, is not to get stuck in crafting, but you should move on to finishing your work. He co calls this completion and he talks about different ways of moving on to completion. The basic idea he is mentioning, and I think that's a very good idea, is if there are two things you need to pay attention to. First, ideas are timely in a period of your life. This means that the idea might be important to you today. If you spend too much time crafting it, by the end the inspiration is gone and the idea will no longer be so interesting to you. So you should be, you should be finishing your craft before it gets stale. And the second point he mentions is that unless you finish something, you cannot release it. This means you cannot start to work on something else, but it also means that others cannot build on your idea. And this is where Rick takes the book in the next part, that creation is a collaborative effort. It's collaborative in the sense that your audience is going to make up their minds about what you've created and often the audience has a better understanding of what was created than the creator. But also it means that other artists will work off of what you've created. And this is okay, or actually it's more than okay. This is the whole virtuous cycle of creation that you build on what others have done. You put in your own personal perspective he uses this illustration of a prism that light comes through you, what you observe, that's the incoming light, and then your personality is going to refract it and it's going to be a personal outcome. So in the end, the whole idea of creation is to share with others. And the closing thought that I take away from Rick's book are two thoughts. First, that the whole objective of creating is for you to feel successful, for you to feel fulfilled. Whether it makes financial success or whether others like it or not really comes secondary. You should look for the fulfillment internally. The other takeaway is there are many myths about how creative people, especially well-known creative people work and there are all sorts of methodologies built on them. Frankly, they don't even know and all of these myths are usually exaggerations. So that's my book on a page summary of Rick Rubin's book and this is my holiday in the Alps. I hope you like the book on a page summary and I also hope you like this video. If you want to get a copy of my book on a paid summary, you can download it following the link below. And if you're interested in joining cohort 10 of the Visual Thinking Workshop, there's also a link below that you can follow. Thank you.